Oh, that is the sound of an $11,000 kick in the nuts. So over the last two days, I've lost about ten dollars to $11,000. I'd be lying if I said it didn't hurt a little bit, but in general, I just don't really care. And here's why. So my name is Dan Brock, the Deadbeat Super Affiliate. And if you've been looking at the news, people are freaking out over this coronavirus. They're like, oh God, the coronavirus. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Is that too soon? Hope that's not too soon. And really what the coronavirus is, is a stand in for fear. So the other, not too long ago, it was about the war in Iran. Before that, it was about the tech companies getting investigated. And what this really just means is that when it comes to loss, people are very afraid of taking the pain of loss. And I think it really boils down to this. In the end, we're just a bunch of chimpanzees. With these little monkeys running around trying to acquire flashy cars, flashy houses, designer clothes, jewelry to convince everyone that we are the best chimpanzee in the ranking. We are the alpha chimpanzee. And if you think about it, it is pathetic. It's quite pathetic. What is more important is freedom, peace of mind, and mental stability. And we're gonna talk about that today. So what I've learned over the years when I look at these investments is not really to worry about the day-to-day -day swings of what that price is. Now, if you look on YouTube, you're gonna find things like people talk about getting rich with day trading, Forex, Bitcoin, you got the Bitcoin freaks. It's like, Bitcoin, gotta have my Bitcoin. Don't wanna lose out on Bitcoin. And you'll hear commonly terms like triple cat bounce, the falling knife, the dead monkey swing, the dead baby farts. All these stupid terms that they put on looking at these graphs as if it's possible to make order out of chaos. So where I'm getting at with this, that is a loser game. That's a loser game. Now there are some probably uber geniuses that have some kind of algorithms and stuff that can figure this out. But if you're doing that, you're gambling. You're, you're a gambler, you're not thinking clearly. Now the proper way to go about this is look for a business that creates cash, it has assets, it's growing, and you buy a piece of ownership in that business. I'm a very business-minded person. Now, after running my online business for many, many years, I've developed this mindset. And when you make your online business or whatever it is, whether it's be like a dentist practor, practitioner, a practory, whatever that word is, basically when you make lots and lots of money, it comes to a point where you make so much money that you don't know what to do with it. It's good problems to have, right? That make, to have a business that makes so much money, you just can't really deploy that cash properly. So that is why as a hobby, I've, this is the nerd, and this is like massive nerd, but like investments. You see my, whenever I talk about investments uh, to my girlfriend, her parents are like, great. I'm like, no stocks and bonds. If you really want to be wealthy in life, you have to learn how to make the money and invest it properly. And when I mean invest properly, I mean, we're trying to get, get rich reliably. We want to make, have our Benjamins make babies. You gotta get the Benjamins making the babies reliably, all right? So there's no problem chasing a six, seven, or 8% return instead of trying to go for these 50% gains overnight, the fool's game over here. With that said, I'm not an expert in investing. I'm just a dude wearing a robe and I make YouTube videos. So that's it, take everything I say here with a grain of salt. I'm not a financial advisor, an expert, an educator in any means. Always do your own due diligence. Anything I say here, take it your, it's at your own risk. But let's just, I'm gonna look randomly at, at Warren Buffett's company. I really like Berkshire Hathaway. I've gone to their shareholders meeting. I've read several books. I understand almost every business that they own. I have a rough idea how it works, like their Geico Insurance, their general reinsurance companies, a lot of their insurance companies. They have chicken coop companies. They have uh, lubricant companies. They have industrial tool companies. They have companies almost in every industry that you can think of. So it's very diversified, but there's a couple things I wanna note, I wanna note here. Berkshire Hathaway doesn't give dividends. So everyone's always saying get dividends, and dividends are great, but you don't necessarily need them. I'll talk about that in a second. But the general point what I'm trying to make here, guys, is that anything that you invest into is investing into a business. It's no different, in other words, than owning a piece of real estate. And let me explain. Real estate is a, a box that customers come into and pay you money for that product that you have. So it happens to be that box. But if you think about it, Canon, for example, they have a box somewhere, some corporate headquarters, some factory somewhere where they're making these and customers come in and hand that box money. It's a building assets, people that create products that people bring money to. So you're somewhere, some point or another, you have a box that makes money. So that is essentially what you're investing in. So whether it be real estate, Berkshire Hathaway, 3M company, whatever it is that you invest in, it's all the same idea. So let me break that down for you. And this is super nerdy, get the nerd, oh, investing, no. 
But uh, this is, you can tell this stuff really gets me going. But what you're seeing here is the general revenue growth of the business over the past four, five years. This is a great sign. So any, it's, from experience, I know it's very, very hard to get a business to grow each and every year. It's very difficult. So this tells me, number one, we got a pretty solid business here. Another thing that I like to look for is the net income that it makes after taxes. So basically, this thing after taxes is pulling in, this is Warren Buffett's company, 20 billion, they pulled 20 billion in 2014. We got 25 here. There are some weird uh, tax changes here and some right, um, some problems they had with like Kraft Heinz, for example. Uh, th it's roughly making about 25 billion a year. So this is great. This is a lot of money. Now, obviously it depends on the price, like uh, the price of the investment. So there will come a point, I think it's slightly overvalued now, by the way. Um, there, there comes a point where the price can be so high that it no longer it becomes a good investment. It's still a great business. The, the, the ownership share that you have in that business is still there. It's just that you might have overpaid for that share. Not the end of the world when it comes to a great business, but you generally want to try to find these at a very fair price. They say it's better to have a great business at a fair price than it is to have a fair business at a great price. So AKA real estate wise, better be in a good location than, than an average one. Now, where I'm going with this, these are the things that you must look for, into for investments. Not triple crosses, dead cat bounces, falling knife, fundamentals of a good business. So revenue, expenses, sales. Another thing you can look at is the amount of interest they pay on debt, how much long-term debt they have, how much cash they have on hand. Like when I'm still looking at Berkshire Hathaway, they got like something like $100 billion in cash on hand between cash, treasury bills, uh, some of their other short-term term investments here. That's a good sign. If a business is sitting on $100 billion or I think it's more than that now, that's a pretty good sign that you have a solid business. Okay, so you look at the assets, basically what the business is worth. Just if you guys are interested in looking in the stocks, then some things you have to really be careful for are the goodwill and the intangibles here. This is where some companies can fudge the line. But in general, these are the things that you have to look into, the actual numbers of the business, how much assets are sitting beneath, beneath the business, beneath the, the little ticker on the screen. Okay, so this is essentially why I'm not scared when the, the stock market goes down. It really just looks to me when it goes down a chance to buy more of a good business, but you have to know what the value of that business is in order to make these judgments. Now, when it comes to selling, like they say, sell high, buy low, I try not to sell when you know there's huge spikes because it kind of puts you more back into that speculative mindset. But the only reason that I sell is when I think that I, when I want to deploy assets into a better investment. So like just, this is a random example. Let's just say Coke, I think is kind of a little o overvalued right now. Let's just say theoretically, Apple were to plummet in half or so, I would take my Coke investment and sell that and put it in the Apple. Just better use of that capital. Now, and that's the only reason when I sell is, is for that reason. So um, again, I'm not an expert. I do have dividend stocks. Those are nice for income. I earn maybe like seven to 10,000 a year on dividends. I'm more of like a cautious investor because my online business is kind of my main focus. I need to be able to sleep well at night. So that's just my thoughts on this. I know it's a bit of a random video. Hopefully you found value. I don't know where I was going with this, but I just wanted to make this video because the coronavirus. Once all the dust settles, uh, I don't even know. So that's that, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, most recent video is right here. Subscribe, hit that bell notification button. It's time for me to go take a nap. I'll see you dead beats later.